Hey, Bob. Hey. Hi, Jerry. Can you hear me? I can. I can. How are you guys doing in the quarantine? Everything's been fine except my Zoom, but I think I finally have it figured out. Your Zoom got better, huh? Good. <laughs> All right. It was perfect in the beginning yes. and went downhill from there. Really? Do you know what happened? No. Uh, yeah. Arnold came. And hey, Joseph Arnold. just joined. Who's that? Hi, guys. Yo. Is that Joseph at uh, 4960? Yep, that's me. So we have Jerry, Bob, Kelly, Brian, Arnold, Joseph so far. Hey, Brian. And Larry was hung up in traffic. He'll be right along, I think. Is that wine, Jerry? It is. It's a, it's a Zoom home meeting. <laughs> it's only 4 o'clock, man. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> so you think it'll really uh, rain a little bit this weekend? Gosh, let's hope so. Yeah. Yes, Not much. a little part. I'm pretty sure Tom was going to call in too. Four oh two. Anybody heard any good election stories? <laughs> Let's not go there. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, this is Larry. Am I connected? Hello. Yep. Yeah, you are. Of everyone except Tom. So, Joe and Brian, are you on? Yeah, we're here. Good. Good. Okay. Let's start it, Larry. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, I can't log on to the internet, so I had to call in on my phone. Um, uh, so we wanted to, Kelly had to bow off. If for those of you that don't know, he'll be on, he'll jump back on about 15 minutes, but he had to run an errand. Um, so we had a couple of different things we needed to talk about. One is the situation with the Shasta Trinity where we've got a new district ranger that seems to have no idea about whatever's gone on in the past uh, with with us or the collaborative or any of that. So that's issue one. And, and then the other issue is the post post fire uh, response, both by Six Rivers and potentially by Shasta Trinity. So I don't know what people want to start with first. Probably the post-fire stuff, I would guess, first. So what is uh, Kristen from Six Rivers wanting from us? 
Well, you know, I, I reached out to her again and asked her to send me something more specific than our, than our conversation on the phone. But she was just on the, our, and she didn't send me anything. But on our conversation on the phone, she was just sort of trying to sound me out for what I thought the parameters might be that the fuel brake work group uh, could agree on. And I, you know, I didn't really venture much. I said, I, I, I told her what we'd done in the past, you know, which was when we were working with Dan, what we did with that uh, salvage uh, attempt. Um, Fuel break. Right. And we kept it along the roadsides and, and that, and, and that there was, some unhappiness from both the industry and, and with us about the way some of that turned out anyway. Um, but that those were some parameters, but so I thought we ought to talk about it and, and figure out what everybody's thinking about today. And of course, then the other issue she asked me about was the already, uh, contracted sales that have burned up and what our, feelings were about what kind of activities going on in there, you know. Well, that's, that sounds like an easy one, Joe and Brian. Uh, don't you have a, a bunch of timber under contract that burned up or at least had fire through it? Yeah, Joseph, we, we do. We have Cedar Gap, uh, Mad Gap, David Slide, First 48, um, the roadside project, which you're all familiar with. Um, I just got back from the field today on the first 48, um, looking at looking at the roadside on top of South Fork um, and uh, doing a hazard tree removal, um, burned hazard tree removal along there um, as soon as we possibly can. And then uh, also want to jump into you know other contracts that we've we've had under contracts that we've had under contract for a period of time. So uh, Brian, if um, if they're putting down hazard trees. I remember somebody from Forest Service saying that they can put them all down with no problem, but once they want to move them as saw logs, then they have to start doing all the paperwork. Does that ring a bell? This is this is all within the sale area boundaries, Jerry. Oh, it's in the sale. It's in the sale. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's all within timber sale boundaries. Um, actually, within the first forty. Actually, it's within the. Within a timber sale units is where we're cutting damage, you know, fire burn trees. Um, we'll be cutting fire burn trees along the along some of the first 48 roads, specifically the 23 road on top of on top of South Fork Mountain. Weather weather permitting. Yeah. So they're <clears throat> we're headed in the right direction there. So Brian, so, what did first 48 look like? It's it's variable across the the ridge. Um, the, the furthest edge of, uh, I don't have a map in front of me, but the uh, along the 23 road further to the north um, is is pretty well scorched. You go down the road for about a half a mile and it gets, it's it's still burned, um, less severe, you know, moderate to, you know, moderate to high. Um, all had ground fire through it for the most part. There is some areas that are still green. And then the further, of course, you got to remember a big portion of this was was not, was not treated. Um, and the further you go to the south, um, the, the worse the worse it gets. Uh -huh. There was only oh, less than a quarter of a mile of the 23 road that was that was treated back in June June of this year. So Brian, when you say the 23 road, is that what we out here call Horse Ridge Lookout Road? That's 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 correct. So I'm so curious Brian, how this works. So if you purchased a green sale and now it's burned before you've harvested it and you're harvesting it, are you paying black log rates or still green log rates? What, how, what changes? Right now we're paying green log rates. We haven't delivered, we have not cut anything and we haven't delivered anything um, as of today. We're hoping to start putting some trees on the on the ground here rather quickly. Um, hopefully, hopefully next week. Weather it's weather depending. You know, we have this front coming in, and then there's another one coming in next week. And I, 
I hate to mobilize loggers up there and, and then get them run off the hill immediately. So we have some decisions to make. Well, I guess, Brian, one of the things uh, to determine is w what is the capacity to get the black timber that's under contract uh, or finish out those those sales and, um, you know, given uh, the short period of time, most of it's probably fur, so you have a couple years, but how much logging capacity is there to, to get that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question, Joseph. And we've, you know, strategically been trying to retain whatever, whatever capacity we have at our fingertips. We have uh, the boats are still in that neck of the woods um, and they've been working up there for the, you know, the past five years. Um, we've got some other contractors with a lot of interest. We're, we're signing a, a new agreement here moving forward with some coastal loggers. Um, you know, we have our company ground um, on South Fork there at Cable and Farley Creek that we're that we're operating right now with two cat sides and a and a small yarder, and if they if we get if we get pushed off the mountain, we'd like to push those into into our our, our burned timber sales or current timber sales that we're green that have you know fire fire through them. And Cable Farley is burned, so that's our company ground there. So it's a, it's likely that Kristen. Uh, from Six Rivers wants as much black timber moved as soon as possible. Hey, Larry. Uh, I did. I did not hear her. She didn't say that to me. And I doubt that. You know, given the given no, I'm our just making experience. That up. <laughs> okay. Well, we need to, we need to remember the experience last time that you know if we can work around those problems, it's probably a you know a learning opportunity for us. Uh, you know, there's uh, probably pretty limited capacity for the Forest Service to tackle anything very major, but uh, for sure, you know, the hazard trees need to come down. I think that there's an awful lot of road with hazard trees along them uh brian can can they sell those if they uh have a contract log can they can they sell the logs off of hazard trees yeah i mean timing is of the essence joseph so i mean they need to they need to be programmatically putting putting some out there you know getting on the ground and identifying areas that they want to want to do a roadside you know hazard tree removal our you know our recommendation would be you know Looking at the roads outside the timber sale, current timber sale contracts. Um, you know, specifically, let's let's call it the Horse Mountain Lookout Road. You know, we got the Shafts of Trinity on one side and the Six Rivers on the other, where we're continually the Six Rivers is been, you know, putting contracts out and doing things and working with the collaborative here to get things done. And on the other side, you know, it's burnt. You know, let's put a project together 300 feet on both sides of that Horse Ridge Lookout Road, all the way, you know, stem to stern. And, do a designation by damage class, uh, region five guidelines, and go to work. I'm just using that as an example. There's hundreds, not more than thousands of miles of roads out there to operate on. But, you know, let's be strategic and when we do this, we come up with a plan. It needs to happen. And, you know, we have more capacity in that neck of the woods right now than, than we haven't had in a long time. You know, we're, we're here to, <clears throat> to make something happen. Hey, Brian, what about, what about all the trees that the Forest Service fallers have decked alongside the roads, uh, like particularly South Fork Mountain Road. There's just one big tree after another laying alongside the road. Can you guys go after that stuff? Um, no. Uh, if it's in, if it's within a timber sale area, um, yes. If it's not, then then no. But if we put a project up there and it still has you know, merchantability value to it or you know it can be utilized then then yes um but the stuff outside the sale areas no it's off off limits okay so that's so that seems like one thing that we could agree on right off the bat i i think you guys should it should be open season for all the trees that they've dropped and they've dropped thousands of them uh, you know, it seems like you guys should be able to go around and collect all those up. Yeah, well, like, that's a, that's like what I was referring to earlier. Um, I think it was Dave 
uh, what was his name? Um, he said Myers. That, yeah, Myers. He can put down, they can put down all the trees, but then if they haul them out, then suddenly they have to do all the, the NEPA work. So it gets crazy. They can let them lay there and rot, but they can't move them without that. I remember that too. So I, I, I hear I hear there's six rivers in the Shasta Trinity. We, we listened to a monitoring meeting yesterday for the Shasta Trinity. You know, they're talking about doing you know, categorical exclusions, um, specifically, you know, out the 23 road, the Horse Mountain Lookout Road, and putting some putting some things together. So, you know, Chris would be a good contact there. Um, I'm hearing that from the contracting officer um, from Terra specifically, and uh, also from the, the Forest Soup, um, Scott Russell. Uh, they're they're, they're look at, looking at it and they're looking at it at hard and putting something together, working with, you know, both the zonal approach, looking at doing something on the Six Rivers and the Shasta Trinity and, and, and ignoring ignoring that, that that boundary there, working together to get put, in, put a categorical exclusion across the top of that ridge. Well, it's about time. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> agree. <laughs> Well, so it sounds you know, like everybody's eyes are on it. I just think that maybe Larry, if you want to follow up with Kristen and just say, you know, have her tell us what we can do on her behalf. Right. You know, it's just they've got they just keep piling stuff on her plate because she she actually works all the time. I mean, unlike some Forest Service employees, she actually follows through. And so they just keep piling more work on her. And right now she seems to be in charge of all the rehab that's going on in and around Ruth Lake. So I have a feeling that's kind of filling up her bandwidth, but I'll keep trying to reach out to her. I think I think if if if, uh, if Kristen and and Ted heard from us and not even on the chest Trinity, um, Scott and company and Chris that we're there to support any and, and all salvage activities along the roadside, you know, you know, pushing for categorical exclusions and, and that sort of thing, um, that would be that would be helpful. Well, one thing that one thing that we need to talk about that's of great concern to me that was a lesson we learned from the last go around with this is that I'm all for collecting up all the trees along the roadside that have been burned up for sure or ones they've dropped that were green. But what I also want to see happen is cleanup somehow or other. There has to be a pool of money that gets collected so the cleanup happens. Or, or who, whatever logger that gets hired has to pile the stuff up. But somehow or other, we've got to factor in some sort of piling, uh, you know, in the in the process. I, we, we agree with you. We can, you know, contractually, we can hold three yard that stuff and <clears throat> shovel pile where we can. And with the retained receipts from the from the timber operations, we can get the money from the allocator right back to, you know, put it back onto the ground, whether it's, planting trees or doing a cleanup or site preparation or whatever it may be. It's generated so there would, would not be retained receipts if, if it's not a stewardship contract and it, a CE probably would not be a stewardship contract. Is that right? Well, should, be should, should be direct. Yeah, I'm not familiar with how they deal with how they, you know, if they're doing a CE just to, in order to do the salvage, I don't know that that's, it's not handled the same way as a, as a standard stewardship agreement. No. To the best of my knowledge. Thus there would, thus there would be no retained receipts, right? Right. I always remember Dan, talk, you know, Dan Dill talking about, um, you know, KV funding and how, how they worked around the stewardship agreement projects uh they that he i remember him not being particularly fond of, of stewardship agreements and that they uh you know they found other ways to redirect the funding from those sales but those were typically green sales back to their district basically so it was they were getting like instead of you know essentially like 100 percent of the retained receipts they were getting some more like 80 percent you know of, of the return off those sales for doing then you know follow up service work and stuff, but I don't I don't understand how I never was it was never explained to me how they how that worked. 
And so salvage and, to me, I think, is probably a slightly different thing to get all together. So maybe that's a first question to ask. Yeah, no. So Larry, um, yes. uh, if you reach back out to Kristen, and then, and you say she's like totally swamped and overworked, maybe get her okay or let her know that we could also reach out to Ted and help move things along on her behalf if she would like that. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's, that's, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. In I mean, fact, I might just reach out to Ted simultaneously as reaching out to her. I don't, she doesn't have a problem with that. Okay. As long as you're sure of that. Say go yeah, well, everything's got to go through her in the end anyway, but it, you know, if, if I'm reaching out to Ted, it would be to help try and free up Kristen's time so that she could deal with what we want her to deal with. Yeah. I just don't want to surprise her, you know, so, so let her know that you yeah. do it. Yeah. You're right. I'll do that. Now, like I said, I think it'd be, it'd be good for, you know, from the forestry working group to let her know that we're here to support and, and do the do something. Um, but I think our best thing for our bucks gonna be to reach out and deal with deal with Ted just from what we've been dealing with, you know, whether she's swamped or not. She she doesn't seem to be the type that wants to make the immediate decision um, anyway. But if she's if she's looking for words being support, um, I think you know honestly I think we need to reach out and, and I don't and I take Ted you know, we support doing roadside treatment, salvage operations, you know, hazard trees along specified roads, and you, you would you would appreciate that. Yeah, well, it does seem like Ted's the one that's going to make the ultimate call anyway, so. Well, you have gotten Larry, your, hand, your hand slapped before, Larry. Remember the Acre Wood strip? We're going to Ted <laughs> and not Kristen. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I heard Jerry loud and clear. I'm going to let Kristen know what I'm doing, but I don't think I should let that stop me from reaching out to Ted. I'll just let her know I'm reaching out to Ted. Well, and maybe approach it about, you know, her time uh, and, uh, you know, times of wasting in terms of uh, the deterioration of the timbers. So, you know, if she can be freed up enough to work with us on that, why that's probably a better, little more diplomatic way to go about it rather than clearing it with Ted before clearing it with her. Yeah. Okay, we got a little plan there, eh? Yep. Okay. Well, for the six rivers we do. Right. Yeah. Right. What about now, the rest let's, of the Shasta? Let's talk about the Shasta Trinity, our favorite forest. And there is a lot of uh, yeah. acres on Shasta Trinity side just from the August complex. So I so, don't know what we do with Shasta, Shasta Trinity. So, Larry, you've already reached out to Chris, and um, he said he's just totally swamped, busy. Yeah, I offered to uh, give him a, a sort of a brief history of the relationship between the collaborative and, and his office. I wanted to explain to him how many years we worked with Tom Hall and how the pilot project was birthed and all of that. Uh, but he basically emailed me back saying, yeah, I'm pretty swamped. Maybe I'll give you a call next week, but I never heard from him. So. So why don't you do well, it again? I would, and maybe, it, maybe it could be a couple of people. Yeah, I'll start, I'll start bugging him because at that time, they had assigned him to all kinds of different things. Now they've pulled him off, I understand, of some of the things they'd assigned him to. So maybe he's got a more realistic workload now. Well, and if it's at all possible, I think our, our best route to get acquainted with them is go on a field trip to the pilot project and talk to him about our ideas and why and so he understands that i think it'd be far more productive than having a a, a zoom meeting or even a meeting at the at the district office 
I think it it's always it seems like we've always been more productive when we've been out in the field. We can come to agreement with and more understanding than we can in a meeting room. So I would I agree with you, Joseph, but I but I'm pretty sure he has no time for that at this point. I wouldn't think. Well, at some point he will. If winter doesn't set in too heavy, we could still do that. You know, there's been years when that ground has been open most of the winter. What is the elevation of most of our pilot project, Joseph? I can't remember. Is it about 2,500, 3,000 feet? It's probably up as high as 35. Oh, okay. So let's just do whatever he can accommodate at this point, and let's see if we can make a connection. Okay. And maybe a couple of us will be at a Zoom meeting or something, just so we see some faces. Um, and it'd be great if Brian or Joe could be at that one too, just to have the industry represented. That'd be great. I'm sorry. Well, I thought we just decided we wanted to meet him in person. Whatever he can do, I would think. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if he says all he can do is Zoom, then I'll let everybody know, and we should have everybody on it. Yeah, good. Okay. Good place to meet in person and, and just go out there on the Horse Mount Lookout Road and look at the Six River side of the hill and look at the Shasta Chief side of the hill and let's talk about putting something together. <laughs> Whether it's a categorical exclusion, let's get something done out there. That'd be good. <laughs> Yeah, so what they're now they're opening the 36 like what four times a day? Yeah, I just saw that on the sign, the flashing sign up there this afternoon. Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty easy, it's pretty easy to get through. They got there's multiple stops once you get going through there, but it's we're, we're hauling logs through it. Okay. Good. All right, well, it sounds like we got a plan then. All right, it seems to be all on you, Larry, so carry forward and keep it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything else to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll start right away tomorrow. Arnold here, I'm thinking uh, maybe. Okay, we and then, yeah, whatever you can offload. Hold on, Jerry. Go ahead, Arnold. I'm thinking he'd be neglecting Scott Russell. He's got a new guy. He knows more of the history, or he should, than his new guy. And um, and the new guy, you know, he hasn't got the what orientation I think he should have got from this forest. And um, it's, we're probably making a mistake if we neglect Scott entirely. Good point, Arnold. Uh, we agree agree to that too i mean i think it's important that he's you know he understands that he needs to be there um with chris and that that's that's a good point and so it could be the same darn meeting it just you know somehow we got to get involved and make you know forever it seems like there's some disconnect between headquarters and the ranger district and and there shouldn't be any and so why don't we see if scott could come on the field trip if we have a field trip or or if Scott could come to the Zoom meeting if, if we have a Zoom meeting. Well, maybe go to Scott it's... first. Yeah, I mean, I think we should actually be a little pushy about it, if necessary. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a it's a unique situation because Chris comes from the SO. I mean, that's where he used to work. That was his station. So, you know, he's part of the disconnect on that side. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that makes it even more alarming. Well, and he knows about this, uh, the pilot project and everything else, because he, you know, he was environmental coordinator, put together the SOPA. As part of his job in the SO, so he, you know, maybe he's just got too much on his plate. Well, he he never said he didn't know the pilot project. He just didn't seem to be have any clue of how it was developed and who it was developed with. Uh -huh. 
So maybe the first reach out is to Scott Russell and just say, hey, we'd like for, you know, to arrange a meeting with you and Chris and kind of introduce ourselves and talk about what we've done and what we hope to do. And let's yeah. facilitate it. Right, right. You got a new ranger out there. We want to help get him up to speed. Yeah. Right. Seems like the right approach. So I hate to say this, but uh, that sounds logical. But from my perspective, the reality is Scott's blown us off from day one. He's not given any credit for what we've done, didn't like what we've done. And uh, I, don't, I wouldn't expect much from him. We can hope, but I don't expect much. Sorry. I, I, I hear you, Bob. I just, I think part of what's coloring my opinion now is that I feel like lately he's not, he's not being so dismissive. It seemed like lately he's been a lot more interested in what we're doing. Yeah. I, I miss that somehow. Well, he did make a, a, a long speech about how important he thinks it is to collaborate and cooperate and, and he needs partners really bad and, you know, all, all stuff like that. So I don't know what kind of a lineup he's got of collaborators and partners, but we, we can at least offer to be the. And didn't, he, didn't he come from a lot of collaboration in Arizona? Yeah, he, yeah, he did. Yep. Yeah, right. And a, and yeah, he was just used to a much bigger uh, pool of collaborators because he was he was doing it over this huge landscape, and you know, and then he comes to Little Trinity County, and yeah, we're kind of the only game in town, and I think he just he was looking for something bigger, but yep. it doesn't exist. So, well, and that project down the Four Fry project was not much of a success. The two operators that uh, contracted both went bankrupt, and not very much of it ever got done. He doesn't tell us about that part of it. He just <laughs> tells us about the planning and how all the people came and collaborated with him and what a big deal it was. But in reality, it was kind of a failure. So, uh, Larry. If you want, I can take on the phone call to Scott Russell and talk with him. Yeah, you've you've developed a little bit of a relationship with him. Why don't you do that? I mean, you know, you know the parameters right. we're operating under. Yeah. Okay, I'll give him a call. Or Brian's talking with him already. You know, we should just tell him to feel free to drop our name that we're here to help. And yeah, he. he, he he know he knows that um, we just we just had a monitoring meeting here just a couple of days ago and you know he's he's looking for these partnerships um, I mean he comes out and says that he knows he's got a big issue ahead of him and he wants to uh, develop these relationships and, and make things happen and those are words words out of his mouth so um, let's we need to we need to reach out and and uh, and do that but let's you know let's let's go to the field and and uh, get him and Chris on on par with with ideas and, and come up with a with a plan to, to get out there and implement a project. So, uh, Brian, do you want to just touch bases with Scott that you do it? Since you've been I think talking both of us should. I think both of us should, Jerry. I have no problem doing that. Um, but All right. Okay. We'll double team them. And do, you, and do you want to approach it as a joint field trip with Six Rivers? Yes. I think that would be really be good. Okay. This okay. Rather than going to the pilot project. Yeah, I know the reason I say that is we, you know, you look at the, the cards that were dealt with the much, you know, salvage timber along the roads. I think that's a good opportunity to, to go out there and support something and, and work together with both forests and, and have a relationship between both and all of us be on the ground at the same time and, and come up with a with a plan and some ideas to, to, to get through it. We're all on the it's same page. Badly, is that I'm sorry, go ahead. Badly as I want to see the pilot project start for Pete's sakes, um, the time sensitivity of black timber is pretty obvious. Yeah. Last time we jumped right on it with Six Rivers and 
you all had issues with a smaller diameter right off the bat. So time's of the essence. <clears throat> yes, I mean, time is of the essence to, to either of these salvage operations. And if we were to, there's no way we had even have the capacity to implement a green project for the near future. You know, I mean, right. what, a year and a half out. Um, I don't mean to interject, but have you guys thought about, have you guys talked with Kristen? I, I assume that the fire area, from what I can tell, got into first 48. And I know that a year ago we went on a tour and saw a bunch of the work that had been done there. Was there any interest in potentially see how that, how that, how that particular project fared? When you were gone, uh, Kelly, uh, Brian gave us a report about what it looks like. Oh, okay. I'll check them. I can check the recording out later. But that was just along the 23 road, not where the thinning had been completed. I'd, I'd be curious to see how that did. That was the part that I was thinking specifically because I remember like being on site and, and you know, pretty much everybody there going, yeah, this is exactly what we were hoping for. And you know, that the implementation that had been done up to that point anyways was looking pretty much how we, you know, how, how we collectively would have wanted it to look. And I would just, I was curious, like, as to like how well that, what kind of survival there was in those treatments. Well, everything, Kelly, except the cleanup. They, 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 had, right, not, the they had not reduced the fuels yet. That's true. There was piles. You're right. Yep. And by the sounds of it, it could be three years before they could get back to treat those piles of slash. So that's the problem. Before this fire. Before this yeah, fire. Right. Who knows how long now? Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I I think it's productive for us to go up and look at what Brian's talking about. It's looking like the basically the saddle of the mountain up there and uh and check that out along the roadsides and then we can always head down the 48 road if we got enough time and take a look ourselves yeah we can we can make a loop there's the jeep trail that ties back into the 48 into the 48 road back to the 23 road um, we're taking big pickups down through the towns i mean it's you can get through there four wheel drive it's not it's not bad but i mean uh there's just such a, I mean, it's, it's heart wrenching when you go out there and you look at, you know, some areas. We, we, we operated a little bit of it. And, you know, you look at this shaded fuel break and what, and you got this prevailing ridge where you can do a lot of good work. Um, for, you know, could have done a lot of work together you know, as a collaborative, both forests um, along a trending ridge line, good shaded fuel break. And yeah, now it's, not, I'm not going to say every acre of it's, 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 it's variable in, in intensities, uh, but there's places that it's just, you know, just a bit of a stern. And the further you go, the further you go up the upper end of the basin, the worse it gets. When it came out of the Yola Bullies on the, you know, when it slopped over in the Trinity County there. Yep, that was the firestorm. That's when the winds really were blowing it. Okay, so we kind of know what we're going to do. Yep, sounds like it. So now we just try and implement it and, and then have to have to probably deal with the realities of what the Forest Service is willing to do or not willing to do, but right. at least we got a starting point. Well, and their capacity is going to be pretty limited, too. So. Yeah, sure. We shouldn't have great expectations, and we don't want a big environmental document to cost two million dollars to to describe a project of rotten timber that nobody wants. So, don't want to make can't, that. Can't, no, can't go that avenue. It's got to be simplified, and you know, categorical exclusions, and you know, SIRS, and and get what we can get as quick as we can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we proved we could do that before with Six Rivers, so. Yeah. So maybe after everybody does their, what they're supposed to do, we should email around and then maybe have a, convenient, a Zoom convenient again just to catch up and uh, see what the next step will be. Okay. All right. Well, let's just all be in touch with each other and yeah. see what develops. And Kelly, you're okay hosting these? Absolutely. Perfect. Yep. Okay. No problem.
just, you know, so, just need to set a date and time and I can get it all set up. Thanks. So Brian, you're more in touch with the powers that be than any of us are. If you could keep us informed and let us know when you see an opportunity that it would help to have all of us as a group behind you, we're glad to do that. Just keep in touch. We will, for sure. All right. Well, thanks, guys. All Good right. meeting. Be in touch. Okay. Okay. Bye. Have a good one. Hey, Larry. Oh, too late.